Golden Era of NVIDIA Here's the reason why NVIDIA's stroke price has been skyrocketed 40 times during the last decades. A few days ago, NVIDIA and SoftBank Group announced a definitive agreement under which NVIDIA will acquire ARM in a transaction valued at $40 billion. Yes, it's really a huge deal. This was the greatest and the biggest news we have ever had in the States. NVIDIA's ARM deal would make it the center of the chip world, combining the two chip makers would unite the leader in the two big technology trends, artificial intelligence and mobile computing. The most vivid thing is this one. Thanks to this news, all of the people around the world knows the one of the semiconductor power players' brand name, NVIDIA. Interestingly, NVIDIA's big deal and their gigantic growth in the chip maker has been forecasted already. A few months ago, surprisingly news break out. NVIDIA overtakes Intel which has been the most valuable US chip maker. The more startling news is this one. NVIDIA's stock price has been soared 40 times during the last decade starting from July 2010. And here's another. If you invested on Intel this year 2020, you must lose 3%. But NVIDIA has surged 68%. NVIDIA has already laid the groundwork for years of further advance. We are witnessing a massive changing of the guard in the semiconductor industry, and NVIDIA is quickly emerging as a new leader in the space. But NVIDIA's legend has not even started yet. In this video, we'll talk about the difference between Intel CPU and NVIDIA's GPU and why the GPU has been gaining soaring fame these days. Furthermore, together with the NVIDIA's future portfolios. Then, let's find out how the NVIDIA is building the future. Where will NVIDIA be in 5 years? Let's find out answers in this video. Thank you so much for watching my video and click the like button underneath this video. And most important, don't forget to subscribe my channel. NVIDIA has ridden one of the biggest waves in technology, selling chips needed to build increasingly clever artificial intelligence algorithms. Now the company plans to catch another big swell, mobile computing. With a $40 billion acquisition of ARM, which designs the chips found in virtually all smartphones, the deal would reshape the chip industry overnight, putting the NVIDIA at the center of much of the action. Furthermore, it was July 20th, 2020. Just a few months ago, NVIDIA has for the first time overtaken Intel as the most valuable US chip maker. In a semiconductor industry milestone, NVIDIA's share rose 2.3% in the afternoon trading on that day to the record of $404, putting the NVIDIA's market capitalization at $248 billion, just above the $246 billion value of the Intel once the world's leading chip maker. NVIDIA's stock has been among Wall Street's strongest performers in recent years as it expanded from its core personal computer chip business into data centers, automobiles, and artificial intelligence. Intel, which for the decades has dominated in the processor for the PC and servers, has struggled to diversify its business after making critical stumbles in the smartphone revolution. While Intel's stock has lost almost 3% in 2020, NVIDIA has surged 68%. Investors have been betting that the shift to working remotely because of the coronavirus pandemic will continue to fuel fast growth in NVIDIA's data center business. NVIDIA's pandemic-era research has been great so far. Through the first quarter half of the 2021 fiscal year, revenue is up to 45% to around $7 billion, and adjusted net income is up 90% to $2.49 billion. How booming research are they? Reflecting investors' optimism about NVIDIA's future profit growth, its share are currently trading at 45 times expected earnings, while Intel's trade at 12 times expected earnings. Anyway, let's go back to the baseline. NVIDIA's market valuation topped it Intel corporations for the first time in the history. Powered by soaring demand for the graphic chips in the data centers and other fast-growing technology fields. Rephrasing this line into this way. 
NVIDIA, the GPU maker born in 1993, has finally topped it, the CPU company which started from 1968, the Intel market capitalization. Look at it this way. That's a lot of leather jacket for Jensen Huang, who is the founder of NVIDIA. NVIDIA was co-founded in 1993 by Jensen Huang, who is still running the company with his signature black leather jacket. At the time, it was one of about two dozen graphic chip companies. It's now the only independent maker of these components after all of these rivals have been bought, folded, or become part of larger companies. Jensen Huang was worked at AMD before, and after he moved out, he made the giant technology corporation. NVIDIA is famous for designing graphic processing units, so-called GPU, for the gaming and professional market as well as system on the chip unit for the mobile computing and automotive market. In one word, NVIDIA is the investor and the maker of GPU, one of the computer processing chips, the brain. We all know that Intel is the world's largest and highest value semiconductor chip maker and also the inventor of CPU, the other computer brain. So, in one sentence, NVIDIA and Intel are both making computer processing chips, but NVIDIA invents GPU and Intel invents CPU. Then, what is the difference between CPU and GPU? And how could the NVIDIA's GPU win over the CPU of the Intel who very first invented the computer brain system? They both have similar names, but the huge difference in it. The number of core and its architecture. This table well organized the features of two different processing units. Architecturally, the CPU is composed of just few cores with lots of cache memories that can handle a few software threads at a time. In contrast, a GPU is composed of hundreds of cores that can handle thousands of threads simultaneously. GPUs deliver the once esoteric technology of paralleled computing. Easily speaking, GPU is serial designed for processing the convoluted calculations with a small amount of cores, while the CPU is parallel designed for the processing a huge amount of calculations with thousands of cores. The number of cores and their architectures. Don't you guys feel a sort of deja vu? Here's the hint. Confrontation between serial processing and parallel processing. Yes, Thomas Edison and Nikola Tesla, the war of currents. The two fusion geniuses waged a war of currents over whose electrical system would power the world. Tesla's alternative current AC system or Edison's rival direct current DC electrical power. Finally, Nikola Tesla was the man of the match. Roughly speaking, the parallel processing was topped at the serial processing at then. This battle again curtains up. Intel's CPU is the serial processing, but the NVIDIA's GPU is the parallel processing. And now the NVIDIA topped it to Intel. Wow, isn't it really funny? Let's make it easy with the examples. CPU is like one smart worker is working really fast, but the GPU is like hundreds of workers work at once. For instance, I ask them to process this task plus 1 plus 1, 1,000 times. The process of GPU is like this way. One worker is doing the work of 1 plus 1, 1,000 times. But the process of GPU is like this way. 1,000 workers doing the work of 1 plus 1 at once. Since the GPU can perform parallel operation on multiple sets of data, they are also commonly used for non-graphical tasks. Especially in 2017-18, to 18, the excellence of the GPU led the era of cryptocurrency mining. GPU can do huge amount of work at once. It was perfect for mining the Bitcoin. Again, war of currency and war of current. A great rhyme is. Anyway, the potency and also the potential of the GPU are not limited only to the blockchain. They also lead to machine learning and scientific computation. Designed with thousands of processor core running simultaneously, GPU enable massive parallelism where each core is focused on making the efficient calculation. According to the NVIDIA, the CPU central processing unit has been called the brain of the PC. 
The GPU is its soul. Cool. Over the past decade, however, GPUs have broken out of the boxy confines of the PC. GPU have ignited a worldwide AI boom. They have become a key part of the modern supercomputing. They have even into sprawling new hyperscale data centers. Still prized by gamers, they become accelerators spinning up all sorts of tasks from encryption to networking to AI. And they continue to drive advances in gaming and poor graphic inside workstations, desktop PCs, and new generation of laptops. At first, GPU was only used for subsidiary of CPU. In other words, a misstep without the CPU, GPU is or might be useless. It seems a limited ceiling to the NVIDIA, but they leverage the point as merit. Here's the kick. NVIDIA for constant gaming among thousands of areas where the semiconductor is using. Since he know that the gaming department is demanding more and more sophisticated and high resolute computer graphics, they released GeForce, Titan, RTX, the great lineups. So the NVIDIA sent their own employees to the gaming company and developed the computer graphic together. That is the way NVIDIA started to dominate the computer graphic card areas. Even now, almost half of the sales come from the gaming GPU sales. The game developers are really geared off for a big lift. Because of how vibrant the gaming market is right now and how many people around the world are depending on gaming at home, I think it's going to be the most amazing season ever. We're already seeing amazing number of our console partner Nintendo. The Switch is about to sell more than Super Nintendo, more than all of the Famicom, which was one of the best gaming console of all time. I mean, they are on their way to make the Switch the most successful game platform of all time. And so, I'm super excited for them. I think it's going to be the quite a huge second half of the year. And then, NVIDIA almost dominated the graphic card department for the gaming and used it as the soil of giant growth. But in the bigger picture of semiconductor industry, still NVIDIA's main product, GPU, was only the supplement of CPU. Then what was NVIDIA's next step? Did they start to make the CPU by following the Intel? No, that's not the leader's move. As I spoke about it in another video, the leader does never stand in a line of followers. They always think outside the box, standing in the middle of nowhere and pioneer their own business. I will put the link at the right top corner of this video. That's it. NVIDIA looked beyond the era of Moore's Law. Rest in peace, Moore's Law. With the Moore's Law winding down, GPU invented by NVIDIA in 1999 came just in time. Intel co-founder Gordon Moore in 1965 predicted a steady two-year cadence of chip improvement that would double the processor's performance every couple of years. Moore's Law became more than a guideline for the computer processor manufacturing. It's instead evolved into a short-term definition for innovation at regular intervals and has become a self-fulfilling prophecy driving the tech industry. Those regular improvements in smartphones and various adult devices are thanks to the Moore's Law. But as the scale of chip components get closer and closer to that of the individual atoms, it's gotten harder to keep up the pace of Moore's Law. However, that law has run up against the hard physical limits. It's now more expensive and more technical or difficult to double the number of transistors and thus the processing power for given chips every two years. Moore's Law used to grow at 10 times every 5 years and 100 times every 10 years, Denson Huang said at the CES 2019. Right now, Moore's Law is growing a few percent every year. Every 10 years, maybe only 2 times. So Moore's Law has finished. Denson Huang declared that Moore's Law is impossible anymore. If the theory cannot make or support a future innovation, we should have to boldly say goodbye to it. R.I.P. Moore's Law. You had a good run. Then, if the semiconductor chips, especially the CPU, cannot make the further innovation, what kind of future is the next? 
Here comes the era of NVIDIA. GPUs offer a way to continue accelerating applications such as graphics, supercomputing, and AI. By dividing tasks among many processors, such accelerators are critical to the future of semiconductor, according to the John Hennessy and David Patterson. Winners of the 2017 Turing Awards and authors of Computer Architecture, a quantitative approach to the seminal textbook on microprocessors. NVIDIA gave us the answer and forecast the future by unveiling the GPGPU, a general-purpose graphical processing unit. As the name suggests, GPGPU is a sort of GPU but is programmed for a purpose beyond the graphical processing, such as performing computation typically conducted by the GPU. In one sentence, they are trying to use the GPU as a complement of CPU by reinforcing the general purpose of computing. GPGPU computing refers to the increasingly GPGPU computing refers to the increasingly commonplace, modern trend of using GPUs for non-specialized computation in addition to their traditional purpose of computation for the computer graphics. Incorporating GPUs for the general purpose in a CPU architecture by accelerating portions of the application while the RAS continues to run on the CPU, ultimately creating an over or faster, high-performance application by combining GPU and the CPU processor power. Especially, all modern GPUs are GPGPU. A GPU is a programmable processor on which thousands of processing cores run simultaneously in massive parallelism, where each core is the cause of making efficient calculation, facilitating real-time processing and analysis of enormous dataset. While GPUs were originally designed primarily for the purpose of rendering images, GPGPUs can now be programmed to direct the processing power toward addressing scientific computing needs as well. Easily speaking, they look for the pros and cons of the GPU for the general purpose of using and opt in and out the functions. They weaken the image rendering features but harness the power of calculation for the complement of the CPU. Following the end of Moore's law suggests, CPU's process speed has limited at some point, but GPU can generate unlimited work speed. For great understanding, let's go back to the worker's example again. The working process is like this way. While the CPU is like one smart worker do the task, GPU is like thousands of workers work at once. The end of Moore's law means that, in the world of CPU, one worker's working speed is limited at some point. No matter how smart worker they hired, the speed of the work can never be upgraded when reaching at some point. But the situation is totally different in the world of GPU. In the GPU world, there are thousands of workers working at the same time. So if you want to faster the working speed, it's really simple. Hire more workers. Importing more cores on a GPU can be the easiest solution. This is the magic of parallelism. And also, this is how GPU can draw the future next to the era of Moore's Law. Until now, the idea of GPU only excel in a gaming department, but from now on, we can use it into the general purpose of computing. Then, here's the question. What kind of future NVIDIA and its GPGPU is building up? NVIDIA's future blueprint starts from AI, cloud computing, to autonomous self-driving cars. Let's talk about this future stories in the second version of NVIDIA video. Thank you so much for watching my video and please subscribe to my channel and show your thumbs up. And I will hop around the world and bring lots of thousands of Venice tourists to you. Let's hop around together. Thank you and see you again.